Hello guys, it's Ryan Ho, back with another video. Today we have the WL Mouse Beast X. Now this is a very special mouse because this is a 39 round mouse, which is basically like half the weight of many standard mouses and even less than that because some of the older mouses are even over 100 grams. So this is a very lightweight mouse that's made of magnesium. So the mouse is actually made of metal, which is another reason why I was very interested because I've never had a magnesium mouse before. And the fact that it's that light, which is really cool because I recently reviewed the Final Mouse ULX and that mouse was really, really nice. It was really lightweight. It was made of like a carbon composite type of material, but that mouse was really hard to get because it's basically sold out and it's sold in batches. So instead of waiting, I opted to go for this mouse instead. Now, the other thing that makes this mouse stand out as a gaming mouse as well is that it's actually able to do 4K polling. So a lot of mouses are, you know, standard 1K polling, 4K polling is four times faster, making this mouse a little bit more responsive than those mouse. Now, the other thing I like a lot about this mouse is that it actually has optical switches so the optical switches basically use lasers to prevent switches from double clicking because it basically uses lasers and this is able to kind of increase or I guess you say decrease your click latency on this mouse and the double clicking issue is really really the one thing that I am looking for I've had this uh, Logitech G Pro Wireless for over like five years now and it started experiencing double clicking because of the mechanical switches and that's kind of the flaw of mechanical switches which they will develop double clicking so having optical switches really is an advantage so I feel like the combination of those features as well as some other ones I'll talk about really make this mouse really special and that's why I was interested in picking up one in the first place now I you know, bought this with my own money, so this review isn't biased at all. But anyways, let's talk about this mouse in more detail. All right, so let's unbox the WL mouse. So I think we pull this apart. And then it's pretty cool kind of unboxing experience. We got this nice foam right here. Forgot to say, uh, uh, there's probably some cables down here. I assume, yep. Down here we have the WL mouse. Another shiny packaging thing. So we have this USB type A to well, C right here. And then we have, what is in here? Uh, we have grip tapes, mouse gates, more mouse gates. It's worth noting that these actually have the little plastic layers that you gotta take off your little feet over here. So I wanna make sure you take those off so you get the maximum use out of your mouse. You don't wanna be like the people on, um, Linus Tech Tips. All right, so the B-Sex is 40 grams. Like, like I said, this is one of the lightest mouse I've ever seen because the magnesium alloy is very light. It also has a hole cut out to make it even lighter, but you get the strength of you know metal on your mouse. So when I grab my mouse, it doesn't really flex at all when I push in. It literally does not move. It's pretty, pretty sturdy. It's really nice, cool metallic finish as well. So, you know, the mouse is actually cool to touch because it's made of metal. So it's kind of cool and kind of refreshing when you touch it. And I think the coating on this is actually really nice too. Like my hands don't slip on it at all. It feels really nice, but you know, compared to like my Logitech G Pro wireless, which was like my first wireless mouse, this thing weighed over 80 grams, which is pretty heavy. It's literally double the weight of the Beast X. And then, you know, moving to my Razer Death Adder V3 Pro, this got a little lighter at 64. And then I actually picked up the Lamzu actually afterwards, but this one's at 51 grams, so it's pretty lightweight, honestly. But this one still takes the cake at being at 40, right? Which is kind of nuts. This mouse has, like I said, optical switches. They sound a lot more kind of clicky versus the kind of opticals you get on Razer are more kind of muted. They're less like that high pitch clicky. I feel like when I click these, you know, since I'm an audiophile, you can definitely hear a little bit of like, almost this like metal resonance when you click on it, which is pretty interesting. And then the side buttons, they're really nicely tensioned and everything. So honestly, they respond really well. And then this scroll wheel is actually the first time I ever used a scroll wheel that was very kind of, I guess, very stepped. So you can feel every single notch on this thing. And it's a little bit harder to kind of move. And, you know, compared to something like the Razer that I was using before a lot, this is just really fast, really fluid. But, you know, it's a little harder to tell each distinct step. So I think the Beast X is really good if you're trying to be very accurate, but you're not trying to move your mouse wheel really fast, but you're trying to move it very accurate. So I feel like that's what's really good for. I've actually grown to really, really like it a lot. At first I thought it was kind of stiff, but now I'm like, I really like how just 
precise I can get it with this kind of scroll wheel. As you can see, you can kind of see through the mouse. So the holes, you know, the holes can definitely, you know, get some hairs and some dust inside. I've seen some fall inside the mouse. However, you know, it's not really an issue because it can go in and you can kind of blow it out at the same time. But you definitely don't want to spill any water or anything on the mouse. That's definitely the thing that you want to avoid for this type of thing. It's definitely less protected than a standard kind of shelled mouse, like a plastic shell, right? This is probably less prone to getting water damage. But I mean, you definitely don't want to have any drinks next to your mouse pad. Now, the other thing I noticed about this mouse is that because it's so light, when I run across my mouse pad, so my favorite mouse pad is the Lamzu Energon. That's the one I use the most. And I noticed that because of these dot skates and because the mouse is really light, it just makes most pads feel a lot faster. The mouse just glides a lot faster on all my mouse pads in general. I think it's the combination of not only the lightweight of the mouse, having less kind of, you know, force on the, on the mouse pad, as well as just the dot skates as well. This thing just glides fast. There's just no other way to describe it. Like I compared it to the Lamsley, which has you know bigger feet and it's a heavier mouse. This one just feels a lot slower on the same mouse pad than the um, Beast X. So honestly, the Beast X is quite impressive if you want a very fast, smooth mouse. And the other thing I like a lot about this mouse is that because it's smaller, I basically claw grip this mouse. So you get a lot of like kind of inner movement. And I, I mean, I'm sometimes also kind of fingertip it too. So it's a little bit of mixed, but Really, this mouse, you can really just kind of move a lot of your fingers. That's what I notice a lot. And that gives me a lot of this like small, precise aim I get when I'm playing Valorant. And I think it's really nice because if you're playing at like higher sensitivity, these like little minor adjustments that you can make with the mouse, I feel like make a huge difference in making it just easier to aim. So that's the thing I kind of like a lot about this mouse is just the size of it, right? Now, if I compare the size of this mouse to the other mouses, I consider this a smaller hand mouse. So if you have smaller hands, then I would definitely go with the Beast X. I think it really fits really well. You can see this mouse is, you know, barely big enough for my hands already. And yeah, so this is really a small mouse. Something like the Logitech G Pro Wireless or G Pro um, Super Light, whatever you want, they're all the same shape. This is definitely more of like a medium shaped mouse. Your hand definitely gets a little bit more meat on the bones. So this is definitely a mouse that's more versatile. And then we have the Death Adder V3 Pro. I think this mouse is certified large. Like this mouse is actually just like too big for me personally. Like when I'm grabbing this mouse, it's actually like way too big for me. Like I can barely even get up there. So in terms of like sizes, this would be like a large mouse. I think the Viper Ultimate as well as the Lambsy Thorn right here, both are also medium sized mouses. This being the Ergo mouse, which I think is a better shape or size for me than like the Death Adder because it's just so big. But for me, I kind of knew that a smaller mouse is what makes it so light, like 40 grams. So this is the reason why I went with a smaller mouse and I haven't really tried that many smaller mouses except for the ULX that I tried before. So after trying the ULX, I definitely knew I liked the shape. So that's why I went with the Beast X, right? So actual in-game performance. So I used to be immortal in Valorant, but obviously I don't play as much anymore because I'm more of a YouTuber now. But I've been playing recently again. I got back to Ascendant, but I'm still climbing. But this mouse definitely was the one I've been working on it the whole entire time. So the actual performance of the 4K, if I had to judge kind of the kind of, I guess, the responsiveness, I would say it's like maybe even a hair, hair behind the 8K of like the Razer. It's not really that noticeable. Honestly, it's almost the same. So really for me, going to the Beast X, I barely know this difference. So for the actual performance of the 4K, I think it's really, really good. I honestly really like this mouse a lot. It's really interesting that like compared to my first gen mouses that have like 1K polling and they're like their first gen tech, like you could definitely feel how much more responsive the Beast X is than my Logitech G Pro wireless, as well as my Viper Ultimate. I think the Razer Viper Ultimate is probably the worst wireless performance I've had. Like this is just noticeably slower even compared to like DG Pro wireless. So. Really, this is definitely a really good implementation for wireless, so I really do like it, and it feels really snappy and responsive, so I definitely recommend the 4K polling on this. Now, the 4K polling on this definitely drains your battery, and that would be the only con of this whole entire mouse is the battery life. If I had to estimate the battery life, I tested it and drained it like, I mean, 10 times by now probably. I would probably guess it's between like 13, 15 hours of battery life on 4K. I've only been using it on 4K to be honest. So it depends on how long you game, but that should last you about two days unless you have no life in game for like one whole entire day. 
then you might need to charge this like every single day. So I would say the battery life would be the con for this mouse, but it's also understandable because a lot of times for a lightweight mouse, they want to make the mouse as small as possible. It has the hole cutouts as well as a smaller battery on the back, as you can see, because they want to cut down on the weight, right? And then the last thing I also want to mention is kind of the comfort of this mouse. So I like this mouse in comparison to like the ULX in the sense like it has actually more of a back hum than the ULX did. But the thing about this is it actually has bigger holes versus the small like honeycomb grills of the ULX. And I feel like the final mouse Ultralight X was a more comfortable mouse, I think, for most people because the holes are smaller. The holes of this mouse don't really bother me, but I definitely notice that they're there because they're kind of bigger holes. So you definitely kind of feel it. So I won't say like, I don't notice them at all, but they don't really bother me. But I can see this actually bothering some people if you're not used to it. But you know, for me, I'm really not that picky, I guess. I'm really not that sensitive to this type of stuff. I don't use it with any grip tape or anything. So lastly, if I do a sound test, so if I kind of click left, right, middle button, squirrel wheel, that's side button one, side button two. The sound is, is honestly pretty good. I mean, I don't really care too much about the sound because through my headphones, I really can't hear it most of the times, but yeah, it sounds pretty decent. If I line up this mouse kind of next to all the other mouses, you can definitely see how this mouse is a lot shorter. For me, it's actually, the length is actually better for me. I feel like these other mouses are all longer for me and they're a little bit too long. I think the Lambda Thorn is actually pretty perfect. The size is, you know, a little shorter than the rest as well. You know, like the Viper Ultimate and the G Pro Wireless and the Death Adder for sure is just way too big. These, I mean, I feel like the shapes of these are longer to fit more type of hand sizes, but at least for me, they're definitely too long. So the B-Sex comes with this cube that's pretty big, but it has a screen on it that shows you kind of your DPI, your polling rate, your battery life, and if it's connected, I guess, to the wireless. And, you know, this is a pretty big cube, but honestly, it's very unique. You can actually have a screen on it, which gives you all your details, which is kind of nice to have. So this is the software for the Beast X. As you can see, you can set your different DPIs over here. You have your sleep setting, your lift off distance, motion sync, and slam click prevention. Most importantly, you have your USB polling rate down here. And then you can actually set different macros. And then you can actually change your different lighting effects. And then down here, you can actually add different GIFs to your kind of dongle brick, I guess. So in conclusion, if you're looking for a really, really nice mouse, the WL Mouse Beast X is really top recommendation on my list. I feel like the only con is maybe the battery life of this is maybe a little short, but with a magnesium metal mouse that weighs only 39 grams, the performance on this thing is absolutely amazing. I feel like this is pretty much a really, really good mouse if you're looking for a fast, lightweight mouse. And it's a little bit on the smaller side, so if this fits your hand, I would definitely take a look at this mouse because I do think it's worth it. Anyways, if you guys like this review, I have other videos on other mouses as well that you guys can check out and some mouse pads. And yeah, anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video.